Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to all of you. Welcome to Faith for the Real. Faith for the Real. The real people who know they need a Savior. The real people who know that without God, they, they really can't even exist, okay? Life would be worthless. Life would be miserable. And that we need Jesus Christ. So I tell you what, what else is faith for the real? It's real people loving and serving a very real God. Real people who do not put on any airs, no fakes, no phonies, but we are our genuine selves, our genuine selves. And we understand we never will be perfect. And we were created by a perfect God who loves us despite our imperfections. So you don't have to worry about trying to be perfect. You don't have to worry that, oh my God, I missed the mark. Oh my goodness, what is God going to say? Listen, you repent, you go to God, and all is forgiven. All is forgiven. So you know what? Faith for the real. Happy Sunday to all of you. Today is Sunday, May the 22nd. I can't even believe it. The month of May is almost over. We are almost halfway through 2022. And I tell you what, God is good. We're still here. We've seen some ugly things. We've seen some demonic things, but you know what? We are still here. And if we are still here, that means God still has a purpose for us. And I mean, God still wants to use us. And there is time to get it right. There is time to go to God and repent and, and ask for forgiveness that you might be free, that you might be free of everything that holds you back from being your best self. Mm, 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 mm. Whether it's addiction, whether it's bad habits, whether it's other vices or things that you're into, let God heal you. Allow the redemption, the salvation that was already made a free gift to you, receive it, receive it, take hold of it and enjoy it, experience it nonetheless. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited in case you can't tell. So I tell you what, recently I went to um, Chicago, right, for a work conference. So I'm there in Chicago, had the most amazing time, okay? Absolutely wonderful time. So when it's time for me to return, first of all, I had to get up early, early in the morning. Like I needed to have the alarm set um, for me to wake up at 3 a.m., which is way too early in my book. If you know me, you know I do not like to get up early. So anyway, I get up early, right? I get to the airport, I'm flying out of Midway, coming back to Atlanta. Lo and behold, when I get to the airport, when I tell you a C of people. I mean, you just look out over the horizon and all I see is heads and coats and baggage and everything. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I am going to be here forever. Like I literally got to the airport early so that I would not be late. You know what I'm saying? I would not be late. I could actually get there on time, have time to relax and settle in and things like that. Just kind of chill at the airport since I'm there so early. Four o'clock in the morning, there had been thousands of people in the airport. But I need you to know what happened next, okay? So I get in line, and I'm just standing there, right? And I'm talking a long serpentine, people. Long, long, right? So I'm in line, and I just started praying. I said, now, Lord God, I got up nice and early so I could not be late. I pray, Lord God, that you move this line fast so that I can get to my flight, and I can have time to relax at the gate before it's time for takeoff. Amen. It wasn't five minutes before the little TSA person comes walking up and she unhooked that daggone uh, Velcro strap and she said, all of you come with me. I was the third person in line. Okay. The third person in line when she opened up that daggone strap. And I said, oh my God, the lady in front of me, she turned around and she said, I just feel so grateful right now. And I said, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Jesus. Listen here, <laughs> I'm going to give my guy some praise. I don't care where I am. So we walk straight up to the agent there to check our ID, to check our boarding pass, so on and so forth. Why do I even bring this up? What is so significant about this story? And it is simply this. When she opened that strap, and again, I wasn't the first person. I, was the, the sec I wasn't even a second person. I was the third person in line, okay? So I wasn't even at the front where I could even for a moment feel like they did this for me, or there was something about me that caused her to look, see my distress, and then open up that strap. Mm -mm. It's because of this. When that strap opened, 
And I said, thank you, Jesus. After having already prayed that the line would move fast, I heard God clearly, the way you hear me right now, I heard God clearly say, access granted. Access granted. And you might say, okay, but access granted to what? Like, dude, seriously, you were only in the airport. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You got to see this thing in the spirit. Access granted. What is it that you need today? Where is the area of insufficiency in your life today? Where is the lack that you continue to struggle with that you feel like it won't turn around? Access granted. Watch it change. Whatever you're believing for, watch it come to fruition. Access granted. Your father says it's time. Mm, 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 mm. Let me tell you. You ever walk up and get ready to enter a building, right? And you got to pull on the door. You've got to push the door. Maybe it goes either way, right? Depending on the flow of traffic, you can push it in, you can bring it out, right? Or it's a revolving door, right? Or if you don't, <laughs> if you don't catch it just right, you might just find yourself going round and round and round and never entering your destination. Oh my God, that's a whole nother word in itself. Listen here. However, there are certain doors you don't have to push them. You don't have to spin around or exert any effort to get it to move. All you have to do is approach the door and it opens. Oh, I'm going to say that again because I don't think many of you caught it. There are certain doors in life you don't have to do anything. You don't have to push it. You don't have to exert any force to get it to move or go around and revolve. All you have to do is simply approach the door and it opens. That is what God is saying to you today. Access granted. What is it that you need? What is it that you want, my child? A couple of months ago, I was praying. And it was shortly after the message on um, the winning combination, right? And so I'm praying and God says to me, Ask of me what you will. He said to me, ask of me what you will. Mm, my God, do you know how powerful that is? Okay, think about it. It's kind of like when you go to, because you know I like to eat, right? It's kind of like when you go to a restaurant and it's a buffet. And everything that you could possibly want is there. If you want it, get it. Get it. It's there for you. Salvation, acceptance of Christ, the son, the one true lamb that God sent to die for your sins, to die for my sins, to die for all of our sins. Salvation is right there. All you have to do is grab it. Grab it, accept it, receive it. Let me, you, you, you need some help backing this up. Okay, here we go. Get your Bibles, all right? Open up your Bible app, whatever you have. We are going to Matthew, okay, 7 and 7. Matthew, New Testament, okay, first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to verse 7. Today I'm going to read from you, to you from the Christian Standard Bible, okay, the CSB, which says this. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you, verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Mm. Verse 9, who among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? That's not what a good parent does. I'm here to tell you. Verse 10, or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? Mm. Verse 11, let's just go and shut the whole daggone thing down. Verse 11, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Mic drop. I don't have a microphone. I need one just so I can drop it sometimes. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, 
and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. God already said access is granted. That verse right there, talk about the living word. That verse right there, you can stand on that. Oh, it's as good as gold and better, in fact. You can stand on it. Read it, declare it, meditate on it, okay? Ex re receive it in your spirit and then speak on it when you pray to God. Father God, if you're dealing with sickness, Father God, I need healing in my body. I am asking you for healing. And you said, ask, and it would be given to me. Healing is my portion, so I'm asking you for healing right now. Father God, I am in need of employment. If you are in need of a job, Father God, I am in need of employment. And I am seeking the opportunity that you have for me. And you said in your word, seek and I shall find. Show me where you need me to be, Lord God. Maybe depending on what it is that you're doing, whether it's in your business, whether it's um, an opportunity that you're pursuing, whether it's a dream, a goal, an ambition, something, an anointing or a calling that God put on you, that you've been working your best in your own strength to try to make happen and nothing's happening. Take it to God in this verse. Father God, you said knock and the door will be open to me. Every door I've knocked on, they've told me no. They've turned me down. Stand on the verse. Remind him of his word because it cannot return to him void. Which means what? Which means when it is spoken, it must perform that which it was intended to do. So when you put him in remembrance of it, he say, yeah, I did say that, didn't I? Kind of like when a little kid, right? They come to you and they say, you promised you were going to take me to the zoo. You said we can go to get this to eat. You said we were going to go out for ice cream. You say, you know what? I did say that, didn't I? So, I have to do it because I said it. Who heard me? I have to do it because I said it. So you see, when we put God in remembrance of his word, it must come to pass. It must come to pass because he said it. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should ever, ever have to repent. So you stand on that. Let me read it again. Matthew 7 through 11 says this from the Christian Standard Bible, CSV. Ask and it will be given to you. Seeking you will find. Knocking the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Hallelujah. Who among you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Listen here, when God said access granted, when he told me a couple of months ago, ask of me what you will, listen, we are blessed to be a blessing, okay? Yeah, I could sit here all day and say, Lord, listen here, <laughs> you know what I need? <laughs> you said ask, so here I'm about to ask. I need this, I want that, I need this, I want that, I need this, I want that. No, no. When you ask, are you praying for other people? Consider that your asks should also include others who are in need. Because everybody knows how to ask for what they need. But I need you to ask to, for others to be blessed. The access is granted, but we must not be selfish with it. Pray for your brother, your sister, those in need of a job, those who need to be able to relocate, those whose children might need healing, those who might even need healing in their own body, those who might be experiencing anxiety, those who might be troubled in their spirit and contemplating suicide, those who might be troubling with their financial needs and unable to pay their bills, those who might need a vehicle, reliable transportation to get them to and from, those who might need a home that is theirs, that no one can take from them, that is theirs alone that they might have clean facilities to use the restroom, clean places to bathe, a, a warm bed at night. Listen, as I say all the time, cool in the summer and heat in the winter, air conditioning, heat, okay? So how often are you asking on behalf of someone else? 
So let's 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 take it back, right? And let's bring it full circle. Let's take it back to me standing in that airport, praying that I would be able to make my flight on time. When I've got a 6 a.m. flight, I'm here at 3.50 a.m. And all I see is a sea of people and don't know how I am going to get through TSA security checkpoint in time to even make it to my gate. See, I wasn't the first person in line. I wasn't the second person in line. I was the third. So you see, there were also many people behind me that once she released that strap and said, y'all come with me and let us straight away to the other security agent. I prayed and yes, I received the, the blessing that I prayed for. God made a way when it seemed like there was no way. But you know what? That prayer wasn't just for me. It was for all of us. All of us were blessed by the prayer of one. Somebody else may have prayed before me, after me, while I was praying at the very same time. And guess what? But so many people were blessed by the prayers of those who reached out and called on the name of our God. Mm. I may have been the beneficiary of somebody else's prayers. Somebody else was likely the beneficiary of the prayer that I had prayed. So when we go to God, when he says access granted, ask of me what you will. Please don't just ask for yourself. Don't just ask for yourself. What does my sister have need of? And I don't mean my sister as in my biological sister. I mean, the woman I see at the grocery store. I mean, the woman I see walking down the street when I'm driving in my car. I mean, the woman next to me on the treadmill when I go to work out. I mean, the woman also at the school to pick up her child when I go for an early dismissal for one of my daughters. When I say my brother, I don't mean just my, my brother. I mean, the homeless man sitting on the curb that I've seen for the last 15 years. I mean, the man who's the single father trying to take care of his kids. I mean, the man sitting next to me um, at the, 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 in the theater where I'm, I'm watching something happen at my daughter's school who might have something on his mind. That family member who might be dealing with a situation that they don't even choose to vocalize, but I can just see it in their face, right? I can just sense it in my spirit, that their spirit is uneasy. The employee, maybe where you shop. So see, when God says access granted, don't just take it and run with it. Whoop, that's for me. There I go. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Access granted. How can I use the access that I have to be a blessing to someone else? How can my prayers be a blessing to someone else that they might be a beneficiary of what I prayed for. We already know the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much, but are you only praying for yourself or are you praying that someone else too might be blessed? That you might be able to be the answer to their prayers, that God might meet their need through you. Are you allowing yourself to be used? Because see, if you've been given the access, how are you then using that access, that privilege to bless someone else. Recently, my family and I had an opportunity to be the beneficiary of someone else's blessings and or access, okay? And I need you to know, I had never been in a situation like that in my life, but it was just, it was all inspiring for us to be able to have that opportunity to stay where we stayed, to go where we went, to experience what we were able to experience because of the connection, because of the access that someone else had. So God used them to answer a prayer for us, to bless us. And I need you to know that's what he wants all of us to do. 
He wants all of us to do. So access granted. Doors are open. The doors are open. Just make sure you're not the only person that walks through. Make sure you, your family, your little kingdom that you've created, right, are not the only ones to walk through. How can you be a blessing to someone else? How can you be used to answer their prayer, meet their need? Okay? Again, I was a beneficiary of somebody else's blessings. I was able to experience something because of their access. And it is our responsibility to make sure that others are blessed and able to experience because of our access. So I caution you and encourage you, in fact, and even implore you, don't use the access for selfish things. Don't use the access just for you. Don't. You know, it's interesting. Even when we think about the access, all too often, right, people, they pray, they, they want tangible things, right? Things you can touch, things that cost money. Lord, I need a house, I need a car, I need this, I need that, I want shoes, I want new clothes. Have you prayed for the things that don't cost money? Father God, I pray that that person has peace. Peace in their mind, peace in their spirit. Father God, I pray that that person is, is strengthened and comforted. Father, send your Holy Spirit to comfort that person through this difficult situation, this loss that they're experiencing right now. Father God, I, I cover that person right now and decree and declare that they shall have sweet sleep as you intended in the name of Jesus. Father God, protect their mind that they might have the mind of Christ and be sober in their thinking to be able to do and experience all that you've called them to. When was the last time you prayed? Not only for somebody else, but also for the things that don't even cost money. The things you can't put a price tag on. Because you can't put a price tag on your peace. You can't put a price tag on your peace. You can't put a price tag on your sanity. You can't put a price tag on being comforted by the Holy Spirit if you're experiencing loss. You can't put a price tag on those things. So when was the last time you prayed for those things? You've been given the access, but what will you do with it? So God told you today, access granted. My question to you is, Will you now grant him access? Hmm? What? What are you talking about? Will you grant him access? Will you accept his son, Jesus Christ, into your heart and give him access to you, to everything about you? Every fault, every shortcoming, every area that if you're honest with yourself, you can't change on your own. You can't change on your own. So will you give the access of accepting Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior is my question for you today. My challenge for you today. If he's going to give us access, hmm, we must first give him access. Because we read from Matthew chapter 7. Let's go back a chapter, okay? And let me read this to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Everything you need will be provided for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to do it on your own. You try it in your own strength. Guess what? It ain't going to work. Not and last. So seek first the kingdom of God. Don't just seek the things. Don't just seek the things. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. Father God, 
I surrender to you. What would you have me to do? I repent for my sins. And Father God, I want a personal relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. I want a personal relationship with you, Lord God. That I might be who you called me to be. That I might be who you need me to be in this time in human history. Use me, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. So I ask you again, will you give Jesus access? Accept him into your life as your personal savior. Repent of your sins. And experience the free gift of salvation that God has given us. I know I have. And I pray you will do the same. So I'm going to get out your hair. I'm going to get out your way. I pray that this word has blessed you. And I tell you what, follow me, Karen Lawson, Faith for the Real, right here, Sundays, YouTube Live, Tuesday night, Kingdom Purpose TV at 8 p.m. It's Faith for the Real. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram, Faith number four, the real underscore K Lawson. You be blessed. I pray you have a wonderful week. And I tell you what, next Sunday, tune in once again. I may just even have a special guest. Take care. Be blessed.